So cool. So okay, let's let's bring this back. You're obviously a very passionate person. A lot of the businesses that you've started have been around things that you've been really into, like sure. uh, whether it's Georgia football games and having a lot of fun and, and drinks and experiences with people, or whether it's being able to provide food and, and happy times and smiles for, for people that you care about or complete strangers. Yeah. Um, in, in your personal life, uh, you know, you, you, since the very beginning of Raw for a Cause, have been supporting our events. You, you've let us do uh, weigh-ins or, or after parties at your establishments. Um, what, what took you from you know, supporting this, this basically startup nonprofit to being like, hey, I might, uh, I might actually strap on some gloves here yeah. and, and try my hand at the rent, in, in the ring. Well, I think Bulldog Brawl and you know, Evan's uh, at Georgia Fight Night, they're for students. Yeah, yeah, I know you fight. I saw, I've seen you fight a few times. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I've seen uh, several classes of uh, Rob French, Marshall Mosier do, you know, right. fight multiple times over the year. One was, was good for me, but, yeah. um, but uh, I think uh, it was always a really cool event. Mm -hmm. And I always thought there's something about, I'm gonna walk a couple miles and sponsor me per mile. I mean, that's, that's fine. And you know, my family did a lot of the walks. We were big in the AIDS walk um, for a lot of years and, and, and hunger walk and different things. But um, what is really gonna, putting yourself on the line is a, something very compelling where people are gonna say, um, I know you believe in it. And that's what really generates the people to support it in a way, or it's one of the things. And um, as soon as it was going to be in Atlanta, I kind of had never thought about it in Athens. I said, that's for the students. I'm graduated. Um, and once uh, I, I, it was an opportunity, just kind of immediately, I was like, yeah, I'd love to do it. So. And, and what did you sign up to fight for? You, yeah. you said you, you've been doing some AIDS walks yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Like, why, yeah. why that? So the cause I chose was ARCA, which is the AIDS Research Consortium of Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And they do things like uh, clinical trials. They sign people up, uh, free HIV and AIDS testing and screening, along with some other uh, STIs and STDs. Um, they do prevention research. Uh, they're one of the leading groups in the country. We solve a really bad AIDS epidemic in Atlanta this day. Um, and they, they do a lot with that. They did a lot with signing it through their Women of Color testing initiative. Um, but you know, they test everyone. And I think they've been responsible for like, uh, participating in trials for over like a few dozen drugs that have actually gone to market for, or, or treatments and therapies for HIV AIDS. So they're doing some, some really cool work on the front lines of that. And uh, the reason that cause is personal to me is my uncle, um, uh, his, his name's Mark, uh, his full name's Martin, and I'm named after my middle name, Adam Martin Berlin, um, in his memory and his honor because uh, he unfortunately died of AIDS shortly before I was born. Um, and uh, really close to my mother, a really great guy, and you know maybe if some of the treatments that they have today, the kinds of ones that Arca works on were available, like he'd still be here. And a lot of times I think about, even though I didn't know him personally through my mom's stories, my family's stories, and and pictures and things, I feel like I do know him and I can feel like, man, our lives would be so much uh, more full if he, was, if he was here. And I know my mother's life would be in, in the whole family. So um, if we can do something to try to help the next person be around, you know, that's, that's kind of the goal, so. So powerful, man. And, and honestly, that's, that's what the brawl's all about, is, is those powerful stories of, of how connected you are to your, your cause. It's yeah. literally your namesake. Yeah. Um, and, and can you talk a little bit about like what it meant, you know, especially on the hard days of training for Brawl for Calls, because it's not easy. You're getting punched in the face, you're, you might be throwing up over a trash can, you know, yeah. like doing all the cardio and stuff. Um, did you think about your uncle? Did you think about why you're doing this? It, it, did that help? I think you have to. I mean, I think any fighter, whether you're doing it for charity or they're a boxer, you have to have a hunger, a push, a drive. And uh, you're, you're, you're probably, a lot of it is, is just summoning the mental energy. That was a lot of the fight for me. Um, and, and I think I knew in, in round three, like I was gassed. Every punch was like just summoning that piece of mental energy. So you have to have something that you're passionate about. And uh, that, that's definitely what I drew on when I was in there training. And training was hard. I mean, the first time I sparred, um, it's not like a, a bar fight or something, you know, I mean, it's very different. And the first time I sparred, you know, bloody nose. And I do remember being in the car after and just going like, it, it, you know, maybe I wasn't seriously considering it, but my mind was making me think like, 
what's an excuse that I could get out of this without looking too bad? 100%. Yeah, and I don't know that I seriously considered it, but my brain was making me think like, what if I sprained my ankle or something? And um, But you know, you just keep showing up and you keep getting a little better. And uh, so you have to have something though that, that keeps you going. So yeah, that was definitely that for me. That first big trial, man, that first time where that, that little voice of quit yeah. seeps into your, your subconscious, everyone goes through that. Um, and, and what do you, in those moments, you know, you're, you're saying, hey, maybe I can like step on a curb, roll my ankle, or, <laughs> yeah. and, and, you know, maybe like business is too busy. I've, I've all yeah. these excuses that I could employ yeah. to get out of this scary thing. What, what makes you stay committed? What, what, or, or how did you talk to yourself? How did, yeah. what, what kind of inner dialogue did you have to, to persevere? Because obviously you, you fought, you yeah. won, but how, how did you get past that, that early adversity? Well, I think it stayed with me kind of the whole time because um, I think well, the biggest one was I fractured my rib like eight, eight days before the fight. And one of the guys, you know, Brett and Scotty, the awesome radio guys I got to train with at Delgado's gym, one of them broke their nose sparring and, and he had to step out. Um, and if I had broken my nose, I probably would have too because I got hit in the nose a lot. Um, but uh, I fractured my rib and I'd already done all this fundraising. And I remember that was another one where I was like, you know, I'm, I'm a lot of weeks into the training. This isn't day one and now I'm doubting it again. And I remember going to the fundraising meeting and I didn't want anyone to know. I didn't think I told you. I didn't tell my opponent, Joe Hodges, who's a great dude, but I didn't want him to know. And I, I think I told like one person. I didn't tell my family. I didn't want them talking me out of it. I didn't want him to know where to punch me. So I like came in and I sat down like, and my face must have been obvious how much pain I was in, but I was trying to pretend that I wasn't. And, and Joe was like, are you okay, man? And I think I said something like, yeah, man, my back acts up because I've been you know, sitting all day working or so something that was <laughs> so far from it. And uh, I, I felt like I had a legitimate excuse maybe if I wanted to back out. Um, but the thing that kept me going was the same reason I signed up, which was I probably would have canceled if it was just some amateur fight and it was a hobby or a passion. But I had 4000 or however many dollars, my portion of the $8,000 raised for people that believed in the cause and believed in what I was doing. And, you know, I, I, I said, there's no way I'm giving that money back. It's going to the cause. And, you know, so that's, that's what made me keep doing it, I think. Yeah. Amazing. Wow. Well, that's what it's all about. Yeah. I, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm grateful to you for not yeah. telling me because I probably would have stepped in and be like, you can't fight the broken <laughs> rib, dude. <laughs> like, yeah. You shouldn't do that. It was a um, small fracture. But, but you, you persevered through. And, and tell me about um, the actual night of the, the fight because you, you were against one of my childhood yeah. best friends, Joe yeah. Hodges. You were one of my best friends from, from college. Yeah. See, for me, sitting links out, I'm like, yeah. you know, I, I'm on pins and needles here. And, and, um, and it was an amazing fight to watch. It was yeah. so close. So what, what, was going, what was your experience from your perspective? Yeah. That night. Well, I mean, Joe's a great dude, and I was a little worried. It's like, oh, it's Matt's friend. He must know something I don't. This guy must have been training secretly or something. <laughs> but because uh, I know how close you guys are, and I know why he's a really cool guy. But um, the fundraising with him was awesome. We did a, this hilarious video where we <laughs> dressed up in like 80s neon, like short we gotta shorts. Look that. We'll put that in the, <laughs> yeah. in the description or whatever. That thing's awesome. Yeah, we had so much fun making that. And uh, there was a point where I was like, wow, I think we're really, we might have been the, close to the top fundraisers that year. Yeah. Um, so uh, we did a great job like helping each other fundraise. Mm -hmm. And so there was that moment of like, do I, am I going to be able to punch this guy in the face like, <laughs> like full speed? I, I don't know because I don't want to. Uh, but once you get in the ring, it kind of, you want to win. So that stuff kind of melts away. But um, leading up to the fight, I mean, I, I had to stop my training regimen. I couldn't run. I couldn't jump rope. I couldn't do anything for those eight days. I could barely, I could barely sit down. Um, I think I went on a date with my now girlfriend, Laura, and we went to like Andretti's because I wasn't drinking for the fight. So I was like, what can we do that's fun? And she hit me with like a golf cart the <laughs> night after. And I thought I was going to die. We were like shooting the basketball uh, game. And, and she was like, wow, you're really bad at basketball. I'm like, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Um, uh, so Laura didn't know this either uh, well i don't think i knew until the next day when i went and got checked out that it, it was fractured okay. so it was still it was still building okay. um so so that really threw me off my game and i was like I, I had this plan for like mapped out for the last eight days and i basically just had to like lay down and rest and do fundraising yeah. and so it was a little in my head when i got there i had a great uh coach lionel from uh 
from uh, Delgado Boxing and Paul Delgado also stepped in and helped me with some stuff too. And uh, so they had said, when you get in the ring, don't worry. You're gonna have so much adrenaline on the day of the fight. Kind of like they say, don't worry about your race time. You're gonna shave a few seconds off on on, on marathon day because you, the, the hype and the adrenaline. And I don't know if they knew that was false and they were just trying to like <laughs> keep me motivated or if they really believed it. But in the second round, Joe hit me right there in that in that left rib. And I mean, it hurt 120%. There was no <laughs> adrenaline uh, painkillers. So um, I had to modify things. I kind of was like, rotating right more to keep my left rib back, which wasn't something I was used to, like changing it up at the last minute. Um, so there was a lot of stuff going on in my head, waiting for the walkout. They didn't approve my mouthpiece. I had to use somebody else's mouthpiece and wash it off, what? and my mouth guard and like all, all sorts of things. But um, so I was really like, can it just, can the bell just ring and have it start? And it felt like it was so long walking out and waiting for them to say where to go. And But as soon as the bell rang, I've always thought, how do these fighters do it in Madison Square Garden and MGM and the Rumble in the Jungle with however many 100,000 people I had, um, you know, because when there's three people waiting on me to do a golf swing, I, I, I do terrible. But for boxing, it, there might as well have been no one else there. Um, you know, the lights, but really you're in the ring. And really it was just, I felt like I was just myself. I was, it was, I was trying to convince myself to keep going. And then it was Joe too. Um, but it didn't matter who else was there at all. So um, once I got in the ring, then it just like felt like it had been during all the training. So zone, flow yeah. state, man. Yeah, I love that. That's For cool. Sure. So, so end of the fight. Yeah. Obviously, a very close fight. I think it ended in a split. Yeah, decision, it was. Right? Yeah. So, so those those moments before. Uh, whether it was John Paul Jones or another mm -hmm. USA boxing referee, yeah. right, right before they they raise, yeah. what what's going through your mind? Are you like yeah. like you're like man, I, I won, like I know yeah. it, or are you like man, I think I lost the stupid win, yeah. or was it some? Yeah, what, what was going through your head? You know, I, I was actually looking at the video this morning. I just watched it um, to check it out before I before I came here, uh, and uh, saw some embarrassing form on some of them, but but also uh, uh, I. I could tell in my face it's so clear, and I remember I had I didn't know if I won. I, I felt like uh, I maybe I had trained a little harder. I don't know, and so I felt like I had some control. But obviously it was it was close. I mean, in the first round, I looked at there's blood on his gloves. I remember seeing at one point the white top of the glove with a bunch of blood, and I go, "Wow, he's bleeding already." And it wasn't until like round was over, I realized that was my blood, which is why it's on his glove. Yeah, but uh, but um, so I mean, it, it was definitely close. But I think in the third round, it was like I felt like I was closer up a little. And every time he would get what I felt like was a point, I just had to summon the energy to try to get a point and a half or two yeah. points. Yeah. And that's really what it came down to. I mean, I could jump rope for 30 minutes without stopping, mm -hmm. but six minutes of fighting felt like an eternity. I was not prepared for the intensity of it. Um, uh, I would definitely just do way more conditioning if I did it again. That would be the only thing I did differently. But, um, but uh, I didn't know if I won. I mean, you could see in my face, I was just... I didn't know. And when they said split decision and then that I won, I mean, I was I was really happy, but I, I saw my face actually, like the face I made when they held my hands up and I could remember feeling it was just relief. It was relief that A, I hadn't gotten creamed and in front of everybody, but that it was over and I knew either way we were one of the top fundraisers and I met, met and exceeded my personal fundraising goal. And so I think we both hopefully felt like you know, that was the win already. And as long as nobody got embarrassed, <laughs> which we didn't, neither of us did in our fight for sure, uh, you know, it wasn't so much like, ah, oh, sweet victory. It was more like, thank God it's over. And we did, we raised, we hit our fundraising goal, you know. Amazing, man. That's yeah. what it's all about. <laughs>